the last couple of lessons had us tracing the background of the French Revolution. We discussed at great length what the three estates were. We also talked about the social landscape that was prevalent prior to the French Revolution. We talked about the French economy and how lots and lots of taxes were imposed on the third estate. And it is for these reasons put together that the third estate was rising in rebellion against the French monarchical rule. Now to understand what was the one decisive thing that led to the outbreak of the French Revolution, let us get into discussing the immediate cause of the French Revolution. So, it is the immediate cause of the French Revolution that we will be discussing in this lesson. Previously, we talked about how the king declared the National Assembly as a legal body and gave it the shape of the National Constituent Assembly or the NCA. I suppose you remember what was the function of this NCA? The NCA was tasked to form a liberal and democratic constitution for France. Now this sounds very fair, very just because the king was wanting France to have a democratic and liberal constitution. But doesn't this sound very contradictory? The king, who was himself an absolute monarch, was wanting to have a liberal and democratic constitution for France? Yes, this sounds very contradictory because the king never wanted to make peace with the people of the third estate. So while he was declaring the National Constituent Assembly as a legal body, his intention was something very different. He never wanted France to have this democratic constitution, but it is only because of the gaining popularity of the National Assembly that he was compelled to do so. So what was the king doing after this? What did he do immediately after declaring the National Constituent Assembly? The French monarch slowly began to gather troops. Now why was he gathering troops? Because he realized that if France was in the process of getting a democratic constitution, more and more power would go to the hands of the people. What would this mean? This implied that the king would be divested of all power and in turn the monarchical rule might be overthrown. Since he was fearing this sort of a termination of his monarchical rule, he started to gather troops. Now he was gathering troops from other countries. Why was he doing so? There was already the French army that could have supported the monarch. But why was he gathering troops from other countries? Why was he hiring troops from other countries? This is because he knew that the French army could be very easily swayed by the nationalistic sentiment. Nationalistic sentiment that is the sentiment that was growing in the minds of the people following the formation of the National Constituent Assembly to gain independence, to gain freedom from this monarchical rule. He was apprehensive of the power that the people would get to yield over him, which is why he was gathering troops from other nations. These troops who would come from other nations would be loyal only to the king. These troops will not listen to anything that the masses had to say. It is for this reason that the king was bringing in troops from other countries who will never relate to the French masses and their sentiments and their demands and their requirements. So, after gathering these troops, the French monarch had the very idea of reasserting his authority. So, in order to reassert his authority on the people of France, the king was making up a new protection force for himself. Do you know what this was called? This protection force was called the Swiss Guards. The Swiss Guards were tasked to protect the king and the monarchical rule. What happened after this? How did the masses respond to this action of the king? 
the masses realized that simultaneously with being apprehensive of the power that they would slowly yield over the king the king was also in the process of reviving the absolute monarchy they thought that by strengthening his personal protection by strengthening his forces by bringing in new troops the king would slowly dismiss the national constituent assembly because this national constituent assembly in the very first place went against the interest of the monarch so the people thought that the king would dismiss the national constituent assembly and bring back in its place the absolute monarchy this absolute monarchy is something that the people feared this absolute monarchy is something that the masses want to revolt against now how were they revolting what shape did this rebellion take now how were the masses protesting against the french monarchical rule they were very angered and together they rose in rebellion to fight against the monarchical rule to fight against the monarch's imposition they knew that in the process of gathering new troops the king was trying to strengthen his authority what did this mean they feared the dismissal of the national constituent assembly which at the same time meant that absolute monarchy will be imposed on them this absolute monarchy is something that they resented and wanted to overthrow so what were they doing the people were going out in protests and demonstrations to counter the monarch's power this monarch's power was now being protected by the swiss guards and other foreign troops the french masses were very very angered owing to the king's response to the national constituent assembly they realized that simultaneously with bringing in new reinforcements with gathering new troops the king was trying to hinder the formation of a liberal state of france now what did the masses think of doing they think of doing anything and everything possible to create the nation of france this nation of france would be different from the kingdom of france a nation of france that will be formed by the people and a nation of france that will be accountable to the people so in this process they wanted to form a democratic nation of france and how could they do it the only way of doing so was by overthrowing the monarch now did they manage to overthrow the monarch and if they did what did they do did they emerge successful let's find that out as we just discussed that the masses were going out in protests and demonstrations and huge rebellions they also raised the slogans the slogans that gave a clear shape to the french revolution now what concepts what ideas did the slogans include the slogans included many ideas among which the most important are the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity now what do these concepts mean liberty means that all the people of the nation had the right to speak their own minds if required they could counter the monarchical rule if required they could rise in rebellion and protest against the monarchical rule liberty ensured this freedom and it is liberty that they wanted from the monarchical rule what else did they want they also wanted equality equality as in equality of all citizens in the eyes of law previously we have seen how the french society was divided into three estates but now 
द पीपल ऑफ फ्रांस वॉन्टेड टू बी इक्वल इक्वल विदाउट एनी डिफरेंस इन सोशल क्लास विदाउट एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ हायर आर की टूगेदर दे वॉन्टेड टू बिलोंग टू ओनली वन थिंग दैट इज द नेशन ऑफ फ्रांस एंड नॉट ओनली वन सोशल क्लास और वन रिलीजियन अलॉन्ग विद दीज टू आइडियाज दे ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड फ्रेटर्निटी वॉट डज फ्रेटर्निटी मीन फ्रेटर्निटी मीन्स द स्पिरिट ऑफ कॉमन ब्रदरहुड that means all the people of france irrespective of the social classes they belonged to previously will now come together as equal citizens of france they would be the brothers and sisters of each other without any kind of division among them these are very liberal and democratic ideas now if you take your memory back to the last lesson you will remember that the third estate the bourgeois were inspired by the enlightenment thinkers in the likes of rousseau voltaire and locke whose writings gave them many democratic ideas these democratic ideas eventually took shape in liberty equality and fraternity so these are the things that the rebellious masses were wanting what did the french masses do after raising these slogans they also raised a tricolor flag the tricolor flag that you can see here and it is this tricolor flag that became the flag of the independent nation that is france so along with raising these slogans the masses also raised this national tricolor flag but while raising the slogans the revolutionaries also realized that they cannot keep themselves restricted to only raising slogans they needed to do something to counter the monarch's rule now what would they do to counter the monarch's rule they required weapons they required ammunitions now from where will these people get ammunitions to fight back the monarch's troop the monarch had already started bringing in foreign troops that were very well regimented now how would these masses fight back these troops so the revolutionaries came up with an idea what was the idea the idea was to seize the royal armory in paris but what did the revolutionaries find after they seized this royal armory they found lots of weapons weapons like muskets rifles cannons they seized all these weapons but another major problem came their way what was that problem while they got all these arms and weapons they did not find any gunpowder in the royal armory so there wasn't any gunpowder in the royal armory now of what use is a weapon without gunpowder the revolutionaries also had to get hold of huge amounts of gunpowder to make these weapons work and they also knew where they would find the gunpowder stored gunpowder was stored in a building that we have talked about previously now do you not want to find out what that building was huge amount of gunpowder was stored in the bastille prison I suppose you remember that we have already talked about the fact that this Bastille prison was the place where the king sent all revolutionaries sent all tax defaulters for severe imprisonment and punishment so it is in this Bastille prison that the revolutionaries knew was stored huge amount of gunpowder this Bastille prison as we have already discussed was a symbol of oppression for the french masses because it was the place where all revolutionaries where any person who was in disfavor with the king was tortured and punished 
so they saw this as a symbol of oppression whenever the revolutionaries saw this prison towering over the city they wanted to destroy it in this way they would be able to kill two birds with one stone that is simultaneously with overthrowing this symbol of oppression they would also be able to get the gunpowder that was stored in the bastille prison it is for this reason that they wanted to storm the bastille prison and get the gunpowder that was stored in this building so on the 14th of july 1789 the revolutionaries went to this prison they asked the guards to surrender when the guards refused and instead opened fire on the revolutionaries they fought back the army with whatever weapons they had this way they took siege of the bastille prison and freed all the prisoners who were already there they also killed the commander of the bastille prison so this meant the fall of the prison they took hold of the gunpowder and raised their own national tricolor flag on the prison this meant the fall of the prison of bastille now if i ask you on which date did the revolutionaries storm the bastille what will be your answer was it on the 14th of july 1789 14th of august 1789 14th of September 1789 or on the 14th of November 1789 Yes you are right the storming of bastille took place on the 14th of July 1789 With the storming of bastille and overthrowing of the symbol of oppression came the defeat of the French monarchical rule This meant that the people or the masses of France had finally gained their power to counter the monarchical rule to counter the troops that the monarchy had set up viva la revolution was the outcry of the french revolutionaries in the subsequent lesson we will talk about what happened immediately after the storming of bastille took place what shape did the french revolution take and how did the french monarch surrender to the people of france and how did the republic of france as an independent nation state come into being it is some of these ideas that we will be dealing with in our subsequent lesson don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now